GBPL's Arts, Culture, and Heritage Librarians. I'm Devin, and Caitlin is somewhere here on your screen. And we're here with Pacific Opera Victoria's Community Engagement Quartet. Uh, would you all like to introduce yourselves? Sure. My name is Caden Forsberg. I'm a tenor from Edmonton, Alberta, and I live in Montreal now. And my name is Micah Schroeder. I am a baritone. I'm from Port Moody, British Columbia, and I live in Berlin, Germany. My name is Simran Clare, and I am a mezzo-soprano, um, the coolest voice type. <laughs> um, and I'm from Surrey, BC, and I live in Vancouver. I am Charlotte Siegel, and I am the real coolest voice type, a soprano, and I am from Toronto. <laughs> Ooh, I like this kind of rivalry going on. Um, we are bringing you a mini interview series on understanding opera with our insiders. So this time we're going to ask you, um, what, what kinds of things are we looking for in a, um, to know that we're seeing like a great performance? Like we like this performance, but what, what do you kind of, um, opera insiders look for to say like, wow. Uh, I think like on one level, like people who um, are either like classical musicians or who perform opera or who are super, super familiar might have like a bunch of comments on like style. So that'll be like, whether that it's Mozart or Verdi or Handel. Um, they'll be like, that's so, like, that's so stylish. It sounds like Handel's supposed to sound like, like Mozart's supposed to sound like. Um, but that's not the most inaccessible, that's not the most accessible because you need to have heard a whole bunch of Mozart done in and out of style. And I mean, who am I kidding? There's not even like a uni unified thing on what it should sound like. Like you should hear different coaches go at it talking about, oh, do you do this in a Mozart recit? Or do you do this in a Mozart recit? Like, wars have been started with like less intense disagreement than this so it's not even unified um but i would say that's like the like insider thing that you'll often hear uh, of whether something's good or not is like how suited is it to this perceived idea of style um but then i'm sure my uh colleagues here will clarify that's not everything that is not a real hallmark that's just like i would say that's like the beginning point inside the industry um yeah but that's all i'll say there I think in a more general respect, you know, like Caden may have said, I think said in one of our previous chats, I'll, you know, when you think something's good. I think when you go, people go to the opera because they want to, they want to experience something passionate and visceral um, because opera singing is so, uh, it's so athletic in a certain sense. So it's such like an Olympian way of singing. It requires so much strength and control from our bodies in order to make that much sound in order to sing without a microphone. And I think people want to go to the opera and be blown away by the amount of sound, by the, the beauty of the sound, and also the, the, the depth and different colors that you can hear from the human voice in the way that we manipulate our bodies in order to make that big juicy sound. Yeah, and I just going off that, I think you you just you can trust yourself like you understand when you connect with something you just know and you you'll know if you understand a concept a lot of times different operas might do a twist on on a show and see if it's relevant. Do you understand it? Um, and I think, yeah, just trust, just trust your gut. You'll be able to know. You'll be able to know if you like a voice or not. Doesn't mean it's good or bad, but you have an opinion if there's a certain voice type you like more. Or, yeah, so just have fun and trust yourself. Totally. I think, I guess maybe like three things you could look for would be, did you like the voices? Um, did you like the story? And did you feel something? And I think if, um, the opera satisfied that that criteria, like that's a good opera. And I was going to say one more thing, just because I'm actually really passionate about this, which is like, uh, I think kind of what we've been building towards here, which is like cultivate, cultivate your own taste. So you go see an opera, evaluate it on these things, but what did you feel? What did you think? What was great? What wasn't? And then look and be like, okay, so that was a, that was by Mozart and that was this opera. 
and maybe you didn't love it. So don't write them off quite yet. Go see something else. You see another op and you're like, this isn't working for me. And you look, it's like, hmm, it's by Mozart again. Maybe Mozart's not your jam. And that's totally okay. Or you see something and you're like, I love this. This was great. See who it was by, see who was cast in it. And then you see another thing and maybe you love it. And similarly, now you start to develop your own taste and you just don't have to like everything, right? Um, and and don't, don't be afraid of that. I think great art critics have taste. Great artists have taste. And I think all people have taste. Opera is like wine, I think, in that respect. Like not everybody likes every type of wine. Some people love a Merlot. Other people love like a Sauvignon Blanc. And that's just what they what they appreciate, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> Opera, wine, two lovely things. Uh, we do seem to have had a bit of a wine theme going on here in these discussions. Um, thank you for that. I think that often as, a, as someone who is um, a bit of an opera newbie, um, opera can seem very daunting, but what you're saying is like, it's, you like what you like and that's okay. And that's all that you need to worry about. And I think that's nice. That kind of um, makes it easy to relate to. Thank you. Yeah, yeah and, and just like, you know, how people develop a taste for wine or a taste for coffee or anything like that, the more you go, the more you get in touch with the things that you do like and you don't like, and you can start to feel confident about, oh, I, I like this person for X, Y, and Z reasons. And, and then as you engage with the art form, you, you, you have a deeper understanding of it as well. Yeah, and even if you go and you fall asleep, you don't have to feel bad. We've all done it, I'm sure, at some point. So you still went and experienced something new, so it's all great. Thank you all so much.